Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. Hello, Katrina. Hi, Neil. Hi, Sienna. Nice to be back. It is indeed nice to have you back. Um, tell us, oh, sorry, I've got to turn up. Sienna can't hear you, now she can. Um, when we spoke to you last, that would have been December, I would have said? Yeah, November, December, around that time. A couple of things that we spoke about at that time. One was a project that was very dear to your heart and you were working hard on. And secondly, we were talking a bit about COVID and the impact that uh, COVID has had on your neck of the woods. Let's talk a little bit about the project that was uh, so important to you around heart health. Yeah, so uh, I've been busy campaigning to bring an angiogram and catheterisation lab to um, Mildura, but more so to the Northern Mallee area, as well as the cross-border communities to service those areas um, following the death of my husband back in 2019 from a heart attack. Uh, it's a service that uh, I, I believe and I'm passionate about uh, preventing uh, people dying in, in, their, uh, in regional Victoria unnecessarily when they could have access to preventative treatment. Uh, so I've been lobbying hard and trying to get that service here. Because I think the key there, from what I can see, is the preventative aspect of it. And, uh, well, we spoke to John at Robinvale, and, and what, that's an hour, hour and a half, Sienna, away? Yeah, about an hour. Yeah, so, you know, to have something like that in Mildura wouldn't just benefit the 30-odd thousand people who live in Mildura. No, you know, if you could draw a circle around Mildura, uh, it would help service towns in uh, New South Wales, South Australia, and Victoria as well, the tri-state area. So, yeah, right out to Robinvale, Sienna. <laughs> yeah, no, I um, it's actually a cause that's quite dear to my heart when Neil spoke to it earlier. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, when Neil spoke about it earlier, um, I've, I've had a personal experience similar to that where um, I've known somebody who's had a heart attack because they haven't had access to this. Um, yeah. And it is quite a common thing. I know just in the small area that I sort of cover with, socialising, um, how how common this is occurring and people aren't aware of it. Yes, heart disease is Australia's uh, number one killer of Australians and that's, it's not a very well-known fact and it doesn't discriminate against age or sex. Um, fitness level, for example, Scott was extremely fit, ran two Melbourne marathons and he was young. Uh, yeah, so just trying to raise that awareness as well so people can go and have that at the front of their mind and every year commit to having a heart health check, which is just a chat with your doctor and they'll assess you from there. Because I think the other thing is too, um, you know, go back 25 years and I know for both of you two that's quite difficult to do, <laughs> so don't even say it. Um, bowel cancer was a, a, a just a scourge. It was just every second person you heard of who got past 55 or 60 had some body that they knew who died from bowel cancer and a government program was put in place now where we get that nice package in the mail every two years and we have to send something out that next time you think you're having a bad day think about the poor sod whose job it is to actually do the testing on that when it turns up but you know there was a, a, a concerted effort made by federal and state government departments to make sure that that became not compulsory by any by any means but like it, it lands in your letterbox like it's not as though you have to go oh I better go and talk to a doctor um, and then when you have taken the appropriate sample, and those listening who are over 50 will know exactly what I'm talking about, um, you then put it into a couple of test tubes and post it off. It's that easy. And here we are now with another massive killer across Australia. And uh, notwithstanding the fact that I think I read somewhere, did I see that you were in fact a, a, a nominated person in the Parliament of Australia? Did your name get read out? Uh, yes. Uh, our member for Mallee, Dr Anne Webster, stood in Parliament in October, I believe, and spoke about this cause and the plight of getting this service to our community and committed to helping achieve that goal. So that was that was a big a big moment in this 
in this, I don't like the word journey, <laughs> yep. but it is, uh, it was a big moment. So it's going to take, it's going to be a marathon effort, not a sprint. And it um, was something that I'll be continually working on, but the, it's progressing. People are listening in the, the local health industry, the, the local hospitals, both private and public. Uh, we're just looking at doing comparative studies with um, places like Albury Wodonga, who is similar to Mildura in being a cross-border community and how they, they have that service and seeing how we could learn from them and what are the obstacles that we need to overcome to get that important preventative treatment here. I think we, we highlighted when we spoke last time about the fact, and let's use Albury Wodonga as an example, if I was living in Albury Wodonga, and let's just assume for the moment I'm over 40, right? And so therefore I've, you know, I'm probably moving into the, the higher risk category. I know it hits at, at all sorts of ages. If, I, if my doctor said, look, I need you to go and have some angiogram type test, I can get up at eight o'clock in the morning, I can drive down to Melbourne, I can have my lunch in Melbourne, have a test and be back for dinner. When you live in Mildura, even if you go to Adelaide, which I guess there's some issues around cross-border and who's depart- whose health department pays and all that kind of stuff. If you're coming to Melbourne, you're driving six and a half hours or, or you know, you've really got to go down for the night, which means taking a couple of days off work. And it just becomes really difficult. You'd have to expect that given where you are geographically in the top, like you cannot be any further away from Melbourne and still be okay. in the state. I, I just don't get it. It makes no sense to me at all. Yeah, and I hope that COVID has maybe uh, highlighted that fact because we were cut off from services because of the, the lockdowns and not being able to enter Melbourne and because we're a cross-border community, not being able to go over to South Australia um, to receive treatment. Um, that hopefully we could flip it and our community can... It would be a good way if governments could invest in the infrastructure and service provision in place like Mordura uh, so that we can continue to offer health services to the people in our community. And I, and I hope there are some courageous leaders out there that can see that, what happened in COVID. People weren't getting access to chemotherapy. Um, they, they would have a telehealth appointment, but they couldn't have any physical treatment done. And their health, it wasn't <laughs> in our community, it wasn't that we were so much affected by COVID. We, we had five cases all up. People were suffering from other diseases in our community that could have been prevented and could have been treated but they weren't getting a timely response because of these lockdowns because we didn't have infrastructure and services here so I hope when governments review what happened during COVID they might be able to think what role can regional Australian communities play in improving the health for all Australians. Well particularly given that people are saying I don't need to be in the office anymore. I'm now moving to Mildura or I'm now moving to Geelong or I'm now moving to Warrnambool. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think like you said similar before, Neil, that people have to take that full two, three days travel when you incorporate travel and the actual testing. Um, But a lot of the people who are coming, they're the older generation. They're on the trains. How many I've had conversations with who are on the trains and these trains aren't running every couple of hours. Like it's three a day. Um, And the hours aren't necessarily the most convenient. Um, But it is impacting the um, medical help that you have down here. Obviously, people who are rural have to book in so far in advance Mm. so that they can plan that trip um, that it's affecting the local stuff here too. Yeah, it's the accessibility. You you know, for some people, it's the cost factor too. The only way they can get to Melbourne is to drive. But what if they don't have access to a vehicle or someone who can take them down to Melbourne. Um, Our flights have been significantly cut after COVID, which can impact getting down to to Melbourne or even to places like Adelaide. But then there's the cost, the high cost of travelling like that. There's no train service. We're fighting to get that in Mildura, to have a direct train from Mildura to Melbourne to make accessing uh, metro centres more... Uh, make it more easier and more affordable yeah so there are a lot of barriers for us but uh, I'm hoping that we can use our geographic location as a strength rather than a weakness and become a bit of a hub for the tri-state area up this way. And it's part of the challenge Katrina that 
uh, you're talking about the fact that because health is a is a state responsibility, that the three states are pointing at each other and going, it's not our problem, you know, it's their problem. I mean, presumably the folk from Renmark and Berry and places like that <laughs> who are probably closer to you than what Robin Vale would be, would that be fair? Yeah, yeah. correct. Really that, that, that you could have a sign out the front of your hospital saying angiogram facility, are they going to be able to access it? Are the state governments going to enable that to occur? Or is it going to say, as, as um, Premier Palaszczuk set up in Queensland, <laughs> Queensland hospitals for Queensland people, um, is that going to be an issue? I don't believe it is. Currently, we operate like that. I know my fa- family and friends often from Broken Hill in New South Wales travel to Mildura to receive medical treatment and services. Um, and I know from Robinvale, Euston, they, they, we, we have the cross board. And Wentworth and Gold Goal are all around us. We have that. Um, we just flow. Everything just, we, we, we're kind of one community that we technically live in two different territories, states. Um, so with this system, the states, and I, I, I'm not ex- I can't remember it exactly, but it was explained to me something like this. The states control infrastructure, buildings, equipment, and the federal's, federal government helps with uh, service. Okay. Yep. Or it could be the other way around. I can't remember, but that's how it was explained. So both federal and state government have a role to play in providing adequate health services Fair to communities. So with only a few minutes before we have to go and do other things, um, let's talk about Mildura and the surrounding, sun, we'll call it Sunraysia region, as a destination. We've got people who have got Easter coming up and... Uh, They'll have a few days up their sleeve. Some of them might even have those two hundred dollar vouchers that the state government handed out. Nice. Why would someone come and spend two or three days in Mildura? What's going on up there? Says the man who's coming up to spend two or three days in Mildura next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll get to experience this yourself because we have more sunny days in the Gold Coast. That's my catch cry. Mm. <laughs> it's autumn here and it's delicious. It's beautiful weather. Sorry, uh, just back the truck up. Did you just say it's delicious? It's delicious. Uh, have we got a cross line with Bruce McAvoy? It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. Like Sienna, you would attest to that as well. This time of year is the best time. Oh, yeah. I've but, almost hung up on Dad a few mornings now when he's describing the scenery and I'm here rugged up in four layers. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm in a singlet. It's going to be 30 degrees today. That's yeah, funny. That's what, we, that's what we heard about someone about an hour ago when he spoke <laughs> of us, to us from Robinvale. Yeah, and it's beautiful and sunny. But so the big draw card... Our town thrives, or our region thrives on the Murray, and over Easter our community gets really active around the river, whether you're going camping, it's very popular with the locals. I know they go and set up mock uh, campsites just to secure their spot along the river over Easter. It's really popular for the families to all come together and and camp along the river, um, out into the Wentworth area as well. Um, there's the we, the show and shine, is, which is uh, showcases all of the power sports that we have here in Mildura. They showcase all of their cars, their um, boats. But we don't have any ski races this year because of uh, COVID, I, I believe. But you go down the mall and you, you get to touch and feel and experience um, the buzz of the power sports, as well as the speedway competition happening over Easter. We've got the Easter markets down at our beautiful riverfront, which our council has done a great job of redeveloping. Uh, it's it's glorious down there. Um, so we have the markets. You can do the park run on Easter Saturday if you're that way inclined, and it's along the river, uh, and it's beautiful scenery. You can ride your bikes. There's lots of walking trails. There's Mungo National Park. But the thing I love about Mildura is the food and wine. There's a lot of fresh local produce that's used we have our own gin distillery here at Fossies, and it's just a really great social weekend. Everyone's out and about. Um, the, my other favourite place is Trentham Winery mm. Estate on the Murray River, which is in Golgo in New South Wales, but it's gorgeous. It's a great place to be at Easter. A lot of people go there for some wine tasting and some good food. Yeah, it's just really social, lots to do, whether it's just chilling by the river camping, getting out and exploring our national parks around us and our natural habitat, or if you want to be social and and get out and about and enjoy some good food, 
uh, and great company. Mildura people are very friendly and love to have a good time and host people. And we'd love to see people come here and visit us and check out our neck of the, the state. What, 500, 550 k's, something like that, up to your part of the world? So it would take, what, six or seven hours from here? Yeah, from Geelong, about six six hours. I was there a couple of weekends ago checking out your neck of the wood. Oh, thanks for dropping in, saying hello. <laughs> it's a gorgeous part of the world. Very, very, uh, it's very easy to be there. Uh, you've got that beautiful coastline. You've got the beautiful rivers and um, national parks around us, so... No, I think uh, you've just got the job. Um, C- uh, no, that's her name, Katrina. You're Sienna. Yep. Katrina, clearly <laughs> going to apply for a job as the tourism manager for uh, for that corner of the world. Thanks for joining us this morning, Katrina, and giving us a rundown on what's going on up in the furthest point away from this part of the world that you can possibly be and still be in Victoria. My pleasure. Uh, good to talk to you again, and nice to meet you, Sienna. Likewise, thanks, Katrina. Thank you, Katrina. That is Katrina. I'm back from. Uh, Mildura, 